Hi guys and welcome to my review for the uh, Simgot EW200. Uh, this is the well the, the next in line in these um, uh, models, which are, uh, the brand has been making more focus towards the international market. Which started out with the EA500, they then followed it up with the EW100 and now with the E. W200. Uh, again, um, they've they've focused on a, a Harman style tune um, with uh, basically a, a variation of the ratio between the, the lower frequencies and the and the upper frequencies being the, the main uh, change that has been done. Anyway, this is the package of the EW200. Very simple. So you can see that uh, uh, that they didn't spend too much money on on this part. They they didn't worry about this so much. They worried about yes, is giving us a properly designed and properly sounding IM. Um, however, having said that, it doesn't mean that it doesn't bring um, uh, half decent um, uh, accessories. It does. The IEMs came over there. Inside this first box. We get some paperwork and we get a cable, which actually the cable isn't bad. If I have to falter it in anything, it's just the fact that the terminations are a little bit on the well, cheaper side. But comparatively to the cable, for example, of the EA500, it's actually better than the cable of the EA500. So I think that that's already uh, worthwhile uh, something. All right, so that's it. I'll pack that away afterwards. <coughs> Excuse me. And inside here we get a little carrying pouch. Which again, I mean, it's it's not what I personally prefer, but it's better than not having anything at all. A little carrying pouch, okay, that's it, and brings tips. The tips uh, uh, is the only the only area where I would have liked a little bit more tips, honestly. But look, uh, the reality is this: that we're talking forty dollars, so uh, you know uh, uh, we cannot expect the world the the, the 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 accessories or the bare minimum, and I guess it's it's acceptable when you consider then that the actual IEM is a premium product. I mean, metal shell with a nice uh, polished finish. Uh, it is a little bit more of a, of a uh, fingerprint magnet as compared to the EA500. The EA500 has got a, 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 a and also a nicely finished uh, metal shell, but it's got a different sort of fi uh, finish overall, and it's not so much of a of a fingerprint magnet. Over here, it is more of a of a magnet. I'm using uh, these uh, green board tips, which are actually from Pinon. Um, and and they, they've been working actually quite well with me lately. I've been using them quite frequently now. Uh, it, I either use these or then I use the, the KBE-07. And the difference between these and the KBE-07 uh, is not a lot in some IEMs, but in some IEMs and in, in, the, in the EW200, it's one of those. The difference is uh, quite noticeable. Using the, the, uh, the KBE-07 in the cyan color and using the, the these... Uh, green tips uh, from uh, Pinon uh, does yield better results with these ones than with the uh, KB ear. Anyway, as I was saying, the shell uh, is a metal uh, design. It's got a nice weight to it. The you know nice. It fits quite nicely. The only issue here, obviously, uh, sometimes well not obviously, but the, the issue here sometimes can be the way that the cable exits uh, can be a problem. And with the stock cable, I was having a little bit of an issue with it. Set, you know, sitting properly in my ear. I'm actually using. Uh, this this um, uh, this cable from uh, from KB here as well. The, this purple cable, I forget the name now. Uh, uh, oh my! Um, anyway, I'll link the, I'll link it in the description. I forgive, please forgive me. Um, I, I've also been using this cable quite often now uh, lately. Not only because it's been at a good price, uh, but it actually does measure very well. It measures surprisingly well. Um, uh, Emma, that's it. The KB here, Emma. Uh, I remember now. Um, and it actually measures quite well, so that's why I've been using it. And I I paired it with the EW200, and it, it it's you know it it's working fine. It's working perfectly. Um, what else do I have here for us uh, before I actually start in getting into the comparison itself? Well, obviously, uh, uh, it is inevitable that I had to have yeah the EW100, okay, and the EA500. Those two were inevitable to see if there is some sort of progression uh, of, uh, of, of, you know, of things. I also have here yeah, the e, uh, HE1, um, sorry, the HE10 from Wizard. Why? Because the HE10 is very much, when I reviewed it, I said it was very much uh, EA500 with more bass. So that's there for that reason. And then uh, on, well, uh, in terms of price, let me just, uh, this is about $20. That's about 65 
that's about 70 65 70 65 70 20 dollars 40 dollars in this corner here on this side here i've got all the ims and the let's say 50 dollars well not all of them i've got some of them i've got a few more that i could have included here i could have included the tin tin t2 dlc i could have included the uh, the the gumio uh, sorry the the pandemon from celeste i could have included uh, the the queen of audio gimlet uh, there, there are the the c the c3 there are quite a few more iems that i could have included here but i decided to keep it to these because to a certain extent i feel that these ones uh, are more popular and stand out and are more the ones that nobody was really paying much attention to okay what do i mean by that well chopo and piccolo okay not a lot of people were yeah, paying attention to the piccolo and the piccolo is an absolute beast of an im next to that <coughs> the uh, blonde hbb z300 for obvious reasons as well one of the one of the better ims uh, this under this price tag okay next to that uh one of the unquestionably one of the hidden gems in this segment the epz g10 trust me a hidden gem uh, it is actually amazing how how epz uh, doesn't do a little bit more to 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 uh, you know um, let people know about it because it is true i mean it's actually marketed as a gaming iem okay and then in the front yeah the 10c the 10 10 i5 c2 and the qes cadenza all right um what then can i say about the sound of the sim got and then you know compared with the the rest of them um sounds of the sim got is about detail it's about being really detailed really really amazing execution when it comes to the mids and upper mids and highs very clean very detailed so it's going to it's going to be an am that will definitely satisfy those of us that like details and like the technicality side of things However, with that technical ability, with that uh, capacity to be so detailed, there are some uh, aspects which can be then problematic, which are a sometimes overly energetic presentation, especially on some female vocals, which uh, they don't, it does, it's not that it gets um, aggressive or anything of the sort, but it can just be a little bit too intense and possibly lead to some uh, uh, un unnecessary fatigue if, if, and please keep this in mind, if two things are not taken care of, you don't choose the right tip, and obviously you're not choosing this IM for the reason or for the, for, for, for the capacity that it has, which is to be a very detailed IM. So if you do not, are not a, <coughs> a treble fan, if you're not a fan which likes this uh, uh, very open, detailed sound, then this is not the IM for you. Then better go for something like the Z300, okay? Because that is kind of the, uh, the polar opposite. Um, bass. It's uh, clean, um, very detailed. Um, it has the right amount of weight, in my opinion, to keep up with the mids and highs 90% of the time, or 95% of the time. This, of course, is based on my particular uh, um, uh, you know uh, uh, music uh, style and and what i like listening to um i don't think it's an iem that for example will uh, be very not that it's not going to be good at playing rock music yes it will be good at playing rock music but that's one of the genres where i think that maybe that that uh, fatigue or that oh that uh, ability of of having that all that energy can lead to some fatigue okay However, if you are going to listen to something which is more along the lines of acoustics, with a lot of instruments, uh, with a lot of guitar work, things like, for example, let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Um, uh, 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 well, Sunrise from Larry Carlton. That's a perfect example. Sunrise from Larry Carlton. Beautiful. It, it, it does that very nicely. So this kind of, of, a, of a jazz-orientated style of music, I think this will do faultlessly with that um surprisingly surprisingly um i was actually quite quite uh, uh, impressed at how well it handled some more bass heavy uh, or some more electronic music quite well as well it actually did very well with electronic music so better than what i was expecting as long as that electronic music didn't get overly complicated so if we are listening to something like for example let me see uh someday from black coffee does it 
very nice. If we're listening to something like uh, Loud Silence uh, from Duke Soul, very, very nice. It plays it very nice. Uh, then again, this Loud Silence from, from Duke Soul is more of a, a, a uh, chill out kind of uh, EDM than necessarily a, an overly complicated or overly complex uh, uh, electronic music style. And it's got a really nice, uh, it's, got, it's got some nice instruments being accompanied then by a nice bass line. It, it's, I'll, pl I'll place it in the, in the, in the uh, playlist so you guys can actually have a listen to it. Um, if we listen to something like um, Piece of Me from Candace Springs, fantastic. Very, very nice. Um, you know, beautiful. Carol Dubox Elephant as well. Very nice. Very nicely executed. This again is a completely different style of, of genres. Um, what I'm basically saying is genres which are not overly dense in their uh, in their um, in their uh, 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 recording. I think the EW two hundred does a fantastic job. Okay, when it's something that's got a lot of a lot of a lot going on, I feel that the, the, the EW one hundred um, sorry the EW two hundred doesn't show its full uh, ability. It's not in its comfort zone. Let's put it that way. Um, Feels good from Rashan Patterson. Again, another song. That's very well executed. No issues there. Uh, the Sea from Haven. Very nice. Very nice playback of, of The Sea. Uh, up and Up from Jeff Ryan, which is a song that I like using because the, the, the sax can showcase that uh, high energy, that, 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 that uh, area there between uh, 3 to 6K can become very, very evident, very prominent. And surprisingly, although it has all this energy, uh, Up and Up from Jeff Ryan was actually... Uh, nicely executed. I think, and, and like I just said earlier, the main reason for that is I was able to actually have a, a good insertion a depth with uh, with these tips, and that's what I would recommend personally. Make sure that you can have an insertion depth which will be good, which will allow the IM to actually go deep into your ear canal. That uh, I'm sure will probably uh, help control that amount of energy that there is, and uh, ultimately. Because you you are uh, also with with the IM you know more introduced into your ear and you don't you won't have to maybe push the volume as as loud um, it, it's it's uh, you, you'll have to actually try trust me it, it's a difficult thing to explain but you actually have to try uh, in terms of uh, the high frequency it, it's it's good it's just like I was like I've mentioned the same way as the mids are very very energetic very full of energy that the, the high frequency can also be very full of energy um, and you know care must be taken again with just the fact of the tips uh, that can make or break uh, the, the EW for you for in my opinion the tips will make or break the EW okay and sentimental mood from Cecil Norby um, Beautiful, beautiful. I mean, it, this is where this is a song, for example, that w where you see the EW two hundred shine because it's not a complicated song, it's not a complicated recording, but her voice is you know it it goes and fetches every single last detail you can possibly imagine. So really, really good in that aspect. Um, detailed retrieval, uh, you know, uh, going a little bit now into the technical aspect of things. Detailed retrieval on here is is surreal. is is really really good. Detailed retrieval is very good. Uh, soundstage is nice, wide, tall, not as deep as I would like, but it's got a nice width, nice height, not as deep as I would like. Imaging, very good. Imaging, uh, detailed retrieval, I think are the two, uh, the two standout features of, of uh, the EW200. I mean, Dream Sketcher from, Bill, uh, from Billy McLaughlin or Taste of Honey from Patricia Barber. Uh, the detail and the imaging on these two songs is really good on the EW200. I mean, seriously, seriously good. Okay? So, yeah, that's basically, I think, covers things. It's got a nice balance, in my opinion, between the bass, the mids, and the highs. Yes, the focus is on the mids and the highs, definitely. But the bass will keep up with the majority of the songs that I listen to quite well. And actually surprised me in some electronic music. I was actually quite surprised. All right? Um, technically, uh, imaging and detailed retrieval are the two things that really stand out. In terms of its timbre and tonality, um, it is good for the price. It is not, uh, for example, the, 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 the ideal timbre and tonality for me, personally. Uh, I would have liked a little bit extra warmth there, a little bit extra warmth. 
But one thing is undeniable. Uh, whatever driver they've used here is a good quality driver. I don't believe it's the same driver as the EA500. No, the EA500 is definitely using a better driver. And using that Q, that's that. what I'm saying by that is that the EA500 is on a different, it's a, it's a different league of, of IEM. Uh, although graphically, I'll show you now in a second, you will see that these three graph very similar in the in terms of the mids, high, mids, upper mids and highs. In, in terms of the base, that's where you will see that that one there actually graphs the, the lowest. The EA500 actually graphs the lowest or the leanest. But when you listen to it, it is totally different. Uh, I don't, I didn't perceive in any way that it was lacking base either for the 200 or for the 100 in any in any song. And only very, very few songs that I actually see that the EA200, the, the EW200 had a little bit more of sub bass rumble than the EA500. So contrary to what some people have said, and, and, and I, obviously I respect their opinion, that the EA500 was a little bit lacking in the bass and, and it couldn't keep up with... Uh, um, with things like the like the Olina, I personally think it's a superior IM to the Olina. I definitely do think it's a superior IM to the Olina, and uh, you know, so that led to people wanting to mod it and give it a little bit more bass. <coughs> Again, I actually have a modded EA500 as well, and the modded EA500 or or or, or, or the, the 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 stock one, they are very close because on the modded one, basically what you are doing is you are taming the mids and the highs to a certain extent. And you are giving it just a small little boost in the bass. So you're just balancing out things in a different manner as opposed to how it is balanced from stock. From stock you have definitely the mids and the highs up top and the bass below. Uh, below. And when you retune it, you're giving it just a little smidge on the, on the bass and you're lowering this. And it kind of balances it in a, in a, in a way which um, it improves... Uh, uh, a little bit the bass, but in reality, it's not really improving the bass much, but rather bringing down the mids and the highs so that you perceive that bass as being better, as being improved. Uh, the bass, honestly, it changes so little that if, if you are really careful in listening to it, you will see that it hasn't increased that much. It's just the balance that has changed. Um, so, as I was saying, compared to Comparing the EA500 uh, to the EW200 and EW100, first of all, there is a definite improvement from all of these. This is a really good IEM, but you notice a substantial improvement in terms of the way things are polished up here. The quality of the treble on the 200S is, is cleaner, it's, 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 it's more detailed, it's, it's everything. You see that there's a, a good jump in terms of how everything is done. Okay, obviously you have to have an astute hearing and you have to have, you know, gear which also will allow for you to, to pick up on these things. If you're just going connect to connect it up to your phone, probably you won't notice it. But if you have, uh, you know, decent enough dongle and, uh, and you, you, you know, you, you listen to uh, something which is got, you listen to music that, that has details, that you listen to a good amount of vocals, you're not just listening to <clears throat> boom chicka boom, you know, just... Uh, <laughs> Uh, just just EDM all the time or, or, or really basic EDMs, you, you will, <clears throat> excuse me, you will notice that the EW200 compared to the 100 is a big upgrade, big. And, and, the, and the biggest upgrade is that quality. Everything is just more polished. And the same upgrade that happens here is what happens when you go to the 500. The 500 is definitely on a different level. Um, it, it's an IEM that would... Uh, easily and 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 does easily compete with IEMs or single DDs in the two hundred dollar bracket and even some above the two hundred dollars easily easily in my opinion um, I, I, I you know those that follow me know that I like I, I'm a big 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 unconditional fan of the oxygen and for me personally for me personally this gives me more of the oxygen vibe than a Chapoan than the Olio the Olina or the Olina SE ever gave me. And I'm not saying that the Olina or the Olina SE are not good. No, they are good. They apparently use the same driver. But I got more of the oxygen vibe on that than I did on the Olina. Granted, I've got three oxygens from three different phases. And I firmly believe that the driver being used there is not exactly the same driver across the years. It isn't. And that is something that uh, we have to accept as a reality. I'm not, a, I'm not saying that... Uh, 
uh, Tanstrom has done it intentionally or not done it intentionally, or any brand does it intentionally for that, for that effect. What I'm saying is it happens and it is a reality. And if we don't believe it as a reality or something that happens, then we are living in a dream world, okay? That is a, that's the reality. My three oxygens, they sound different from each other. And I have no issues with saying that out loud. My three oxygens sound different, okay? And that gave me more of a vibe of my original oxygen, okay, definitely, than, for example, I got, as I mentioned, from the Olina. Compared to the uh, e, uh, HE10 <coughs> from Wizard, the HE10 is very much that in terms of the mids and the highs, but it's got a, a significant bass boost. And that bass boost, yes, does give it a nice warmth. It does make it um, uh, more more... I would say lush feeling to a certain extent, but it makes it as well lose a little bit of the detail and, and the, the clarity that the EA has. So I would say that these two, although very, very similar, um, you have to choose what do you prefer. You prefer detail or you prefer a more uh, lush sound, okay? Again, very much it's also going to be dependent on obviously what what music genre you like as compared to the EW200 uh, you notice that the e, uh, HE10 is fuller in the bass definitely in the 200 and again it loses out just a little bit in terms of the overall detail to the to the uh, EW it's uh, once again the same situation as with the EA500 it's what do you prefer you prefer a fuller sound, okay, with a, a, a little bit of a loss in terms of the detail and the clarity, or do you prefer a more clear sound? So I, I'm not going to say there's a, a there's no winner or loser here. It's just they've been tuned in a in a slightly different manner, okay. <clears throat> As compared then to the ones which are let's say more within its its price uh, range and 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 uh, the ones that make sense to actually be comparing it with, well. Um, tin, tin, tin Hi-Fi C2. The C2 with the, the EW200, the EW200 is better because it's cleaner. It does things in a, in a more, uh, it's not really in the base where you see the difference. It's not really in, overall in the mids or in the highs. It's just in the cleanliness of the sound. This can come across a little bit uh, as uh, uh, hard or brash or, or, or just, you know, uh, unpolished and this is very polished that's the difference here okay if you don't have either and you are choosing one definitely I would go for the EW200 because it is a more polished IEM that's it out of the way compared to the cadenza the cadenza has a base which confers it a nicer timbre and tonality overall so in terms of timbre and tonality it is superior to the um, EW200 in terms of the way the mids are done, I also prefer the mids of the EW uh, of the cadenza over the EW. Uh, where the EW then uh, beats the cadenza is in terms of the cleanliness in the upper mids and treble and how much detail it goes and fetches. So this is more of an unfatiguing kind of a listen. This will, will you know you you you'll be. Uh, listening to the cadenza probably for a longer period of time because you don't have to worry about that treble or anything and like up and up from Jeff Ryan over here it's it's by comparison by co it sounds dead but it doesn't it sounds more than than fine more than energetic enough but by comparison if you listen to one and then you listen to the other straight away you you, you think actually am I listening to a single DD or have I is this a, a hybrid perhaps that that's how much the difference is okay so I wouldn't say uh, that one beats the other, I would say that they are good side grades, all right? So, sorry. So that's that out of the way as well. As compared to the Chopoan Piccolo, uh, the Z300, and then the, the, the G10. With the Piccolo, um, bass, the, the balance that they've done on the, on, the, on the Piccolo as well, between bass, mids, and highs, I think has been perfectly executed. It is about being a relaxed listen, very chilled out uh, with nice extension. Actually, the funny thing, it's, it's actually curious, and I'll, I'll bring your attention to the, the, the following. The EW100, okay, and the Tin Hi-Fi C2 are kind of the same thing, okay, uh, where they trade blows very, comp very comp you know, they trade blows uh, uh, across the board with one winning in one aspect, one winning in the other. So these two are very similar in their tuning. The piccolo 
and the Z300 again are two IEMs which are very easy to compare because the ultimate balance they have in the tuning is very similar um, with uh, the only real difference being that you have a little bit more detail here on the on the piccolo as compared to the H to the to the Z300 the HB Z300 so it's not in the base although the, the base here is fantastic uh, it, but it's not really in the base that uh, that uh, the, 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 the 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 piccolo loses to this it's not really in the mids it's in the high frequency and again the, the similarity of the these two is very much so and again that that similarity occurs very much so with the cadenza and with the g10 and what i'm saying by that is if i'm to if i have to compare them in terms of uh, again timbre and tonality uh, i prefer the timbre and tonality of these two over the 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 the, the ew200 uh, if i compare them in terms of uh, overall musicality uh, then it starts being a little bit more difficult because these play very well, but in certain genres, in certain music, the extra detail that you have here just makes things more musical, more 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 engaging than than, than it does over there. And by no means am I saying that these are not musical, but you notice it, okay? Especially in, in detailed retrieval and 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 and, and you know and and the the, the 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 ability of perceived sound stage and, and imaging, this is a clear winner. It definitely beats the Z three hundred. It beats the Piccolo quite a lot of times. Uh, so you know, I, I would probably look to not uh, uh, kind of say that it's a side grade to the Cadenza once again. I would say that it overall is a superior IEM uh, to the to the to the Z three hundred, and also a superior IEM to the Piccolo uh, because of it being more musical and more detailed. If over here it was just the fact that it was a little bit more detailed, the biggest difference, but the musicality side of things kind of was very equal. Uh, with regards to these two, I would say that they are just. Um, uh, they they fall behind you know more in that musicality and in that detail as compared to the sim god and although the sim god does have that issue of being overly energetic at times it does end up just slightly edging out these two okay but they are very equal and then finally compared here with the g10 it's basically a repeat of the cadenza the uh, what i said for the cadenza i applied to the g10 i consider these two a very solid side grade to each other uh, it it is actually uh, uh, honestly uh, I'm I'm very impressed with it with the G10. It's uh, got great timbre and tonality. Uh, it's got very decent technicalities, um, even better technicalities overall than the Cadenza. Slightly better than the Cadenza. Uh, sm not a not as not a bigger not not a, as big soundstage, but the imaging is slightly better and slightly more detailed retrieval in the Cadenza musical as well very nice i am and again the biggest difference here is just that this has more detail that's it otherwise in terms of musicality everything very very equal although yes of course uh, the tuning is different you notice the sound here is more is brighter yeah? and this is a is a more warmer more gay more lush kind of sound let's put it that way um so yeah guys that that's basically it i mean ew200 um Solid, solid sub fifty dollar IM. Very solid. Uh, you know, if if what you like is a more detailed presentation, then definitely a, a better upgrade over uh, a, deeper, a better upgrade. No, definitely a better option over the you know the the tin uh, t, the C two. Um, more, more, more solid, more complete IM overall as compared to the Piccolo. Again, more complete as well compared to the H the HBB Z three hundred. And compared to the to the G uh, G10 and to the Cadenza, uh, a very nice side grade uh, to to these. I mean, you honestly you can't really go wrong here with these three. You 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 really cannot go wrong. I would I would probably say these three are the stand out ones, the ones that really stand out quite quite significantly in the in the sub fifty dollar uh, bracket. As compared then to the HE10, um, it is very similar, but uh, perhaps with a better balance here overall than the HE10, because the HE10 base is uh, a lot, and you know, ultimately, ultimately, I would probably say that this is more balanced out than that. 
compared to the EA five hundred, no, no, the EA five hundred is better. End of story. Okay, and compared to the to the to the one hundred, uh, a solid upgrade over the one hundred. It really, really, uh, you know, uh, it's it the progression here yeah, is perfectly, perfectly done. Uh, and that's it, guys. I'll show you now the graphs and uh, we'll wrap it up. All right, you take care. Hi, guys, and uh, welcome now to the uh, graph section here for the uh, uh, EW two hundred from SimGot. Let me just put the EW200 um, graph up first. Uh, where is it? Where is it? My apologies. My apologies. Here we go. Okay, number 20. So, all right. So, that's the graph of my EW200 using um, the medium size tip that I used. Uh, and as you can see, Graphically, there's really nothing wrong. There's a very good balance between uh, uh, the extremes of the frequencies. So this is the lowest point. The highest point basically matches the base, matches the, the, the mids and upper mids. So really nice balance. Um, uh, a really nicely, a nicely done pin again, peaking at around 2.7, 2.8K, with then a nice uh, plateau, you know, taking it across. Uh, slightly gentle slope and some extension past 10k so uh, honestly my opinion I mean, graphically at least you can't really fault it okay uh, I'll compare it now straight away with the EWs let's put it that way first one is the EW100 which graphically at least uh, you don't feel that the, you know the base is any different or or anything you see some differences here in the uh, 5 to uh, 10k, um, 9, 10k area. But when you listen to it, what you do notice is that, yes, although by no means is the 200 a base monster, it has got a cleaner, more, more, more prominent, more present base than the EW100. And then the upper mid, the mids, upper mids and treble are just more polished. The only thing that you get a perception of is of a slightly larger sound stage in the EW100, but it's, it's more of a perception than really uh, the reality when you actually start listening to it more carefully. Okay? As compared to the EA500, uh, you can see that they, oh, they, they graph almost identical in terms of the mids and highs. Very, very identical. This is with the red nozzle, by the way. Um, and that, yes, there is a difference here of a good uh, uh, two, uh, two, four, four, five dBs in terms of the bass. But the reality is, the biggest difference is actually below 40 hertz, okay? Above 40 hertz, you don't notice that it's not as prominent, and that's why I said only one or two songs, I noticed just a slight more rumble on, um, on the, the EW200 as opposed to the 500, but it's just, when you listen to the 500, the way that the 500 uh, driver works, Honestly, it is absolutely a, a beast. I mean, it is truly, truly a beast of an IEM. It plays, uh, you know, e even this balance, which, you know, skews things towards being a mid-centric IEM and everything, um, it, it is very well done. I, I have, have absolutely nothing to say against the, the, the 500. I think the 500 is unquestionably one of the better IEMs currently in the market. Okay, let me just put this up again there as well. The... Uh, the uh, EW200 and now the next one I'm going to show you is the HE10 that way we get it all out of the way the HE10 as you can see again almost identical from 200 Hertz up these three IMs are identical it's just the base that it has which is more and that base then does mean that compared to the EA500 I mean you can see it's a huge difference it's a 10 dB difference in base and um, compared to the EA500 uh, it's makes it a darker sounding eye and it loses a little bit of detail and, and, and resolution overall. Um, it's, uh, I don't consider it to be bad or wrong, it's just the way that they've tuned it. Uh, and I feel that you know, it would be unfair for me to say that one is better than the other. They've just been tuned in with two different, you know, two different ideas. Uh, if you like detail, then that, that's not the IEM for you. However, if you like your base, then definitely the HE10 is the one for you. As compared to the 200, let me just take here the 500 out. As compared to the 200, uh, what you do notice is that if the song is not a song which pushes the bass, they sound very similar, very, very similar in every detail. If it's just a song like uh, Cecil Norby's, uh, like, like, like I listen to a lot of Cecil Norby, or, um, you know, 
it, they, they sound identical, identical. Uh, where you will notice then that that extra bass of the HE10 can be perhaps a little bit too much and, and then uh, detract a little bit of that uh, detail is in, in stuff which has got a little bit more, uh, um, a little bit more like, uh, it's just more, uh, the recording is just more bass heavy. You know, and there you will notice that it loses uh, the, the, the ability to be as detailed as the 200. Ultimately, 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 <sighs> Look, uh, it's a hard one. Trust me, it is a hard one. Probably, like I said earlier, the, the EW200 will be the more balanced one. If, if you know, if, uh, especially when you then you consider as well that it costs twenty dollars less. Ultimately, probably it will be the more balanced one. Okay, as then compared to the the rest of them, uh, you know, the 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 the, 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 the sub fifty dollar. Let's put it, uh, uh, IEMs. First of all, yeah, the the tin, the C2. Uh, they graph identical as you can see identical they're using the same tips they graph identical the c2 is just less polished in the story uh, the ew200 is more polished okay as compared to the uh, cadenza again very similar uh, however the cadenza's tonality uh, with regards to for example the, the the way that the balance is obtained let me just change here the color of the cadenza so we can actually see it a little bit better uh, you know, as you can, although you, you you get the perception that they are exactly the same in terms of the bass. Now you just listen to the bass of the cadenza, and the cadenza just sounds uh, a little bit more, a, a little bit more fuller. And that is mainly down to the fact that although it seems like it has the same mids and upper mids and treble uh, of of the sim of the sim god, it doesn't have that same ultimate cleanliness. Um, I still think that they are a side grade to each other, in my opinion. Not really one beats the other. Okay. The, t the timbre and the tonality of the cadenza is really, really good. And, and to that effect as well, the, the same thing happens with uh, the, the EPZ. The EPZ, again, as you can see, the, it's, it's basically a cadenza. Um, the, 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 the tonality, the timbre of the EPZ is it's, it's really good. It's, uh, honestly, I don't understand why they're not, uh, they're not marketing this in a slightly more, more aggressive manner because it is a very good idea. So cadenza and uh, and EPZ are uh, similar in their uh, execution. And then compared to the um, to the um, uh, my God to the blonde, which is this one here, um, you notice that the blonde does uh, lose out in terms of uh, upper mids and, and treble to the to the uh, simcot in a more uh, prominent manner than what is seen here graphically. Um, yes, it is got amazing bass. I'm not gonna. I'm not detracting one bit from the bass of the uh, of the uh, Z300. The Z300 has got fantastic bass, and the, and the driver is definitely capable. It just was tuned in this manner to be more more relaxed, more subdued in the mids and highs, uh, and it loses out in that aspect. And overall, overall, uh, you know, considering the balance and everything. I feel that the, the, the musicality and then the, 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 the technical capabilities of the sim got edge out the Z300, okay? And uh, very much so the same thing applies uh, to the, to the uh, Piccolo. Um, it, it is a very balanced IM, very, it's got a great sound. You know, when you actually compare it to the, to the Blonde, you can see that it's got more ability uh, in terms of its 3Dness than the Blonde. Um, but, uh, However nice, relaxed, and, 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 and correct in terms of its tonality and timbre, it just loses out in terms of its final musicality engagement with regards to certain songs, especially female vocals, uh, and, and uh, the, the technical department, it just loses out. So, you know, it's not that it's a bad IM. If you buy it, you, 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 you won't regret buying it. But if, if, if you are only capable of buying one IM and you want the one that ticks the most right boxes, then uh, probably... The, 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 the sim god is the, the wiser choice for, for that. Anyway, guys, uh, sorry, I left the wrong one on. That's it. Anyway, uh, as I said, um, it's a very solid IM, uh, very good upgrade over the 100 as compared to the 500. No, no, the 500 is still the king for me. 
Um, and uh, yeah, I can only I can only wait to see what uh, what Sim God has in store for us next because uh, unquestionably they are ticking the right boxes at the different price segments. Uh, the EW100, fantastic IM at under twenty dollars. This now at under fifty is undisputed. Uh, the, 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 the the one of the best, if not the best, the EA five hundred has the same the same title at under hundred dollars, and I would, as I said earlier, even dare say at under two hundred dollars, there's not um, there's not an IM which will clearly beat it. Okay, and and uh, I'm I'm not going to compare it to the to the S twelve. I'm not going to compare it to the planars, to, to because that's opening up a can of worms there. If I'm going to compare it to just a single DD. Uh, this easily, easily trades blows with things like the HANA 2021, like the Kato, uh, you know, the EA500 easily trades blows with that. Uh, and that's it, guys. As always, like and subscribe. Any questions you might have, please feel free to ask. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. You take care now. Bye-bye.